Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now we will start the next lecture, lecture number 3, which is on the chemistry of natural dyes. Having understood the significance of natural dyes, the history of natural dyes, now we will move on to the chemistry of natural dyes. Natural dyes are colorants which are derived from plants, animals and mineral sources, but remember they are all molecules which are colored in nature. These dyes have been used for centuries to color fabrics, textiles and other materials. The chemistry of natural dyes involves the presence of specific compounds that impart color to the substrate. So, because of those specific compounds that are present in the natural dye, the color is responsibly coming from that. Here are some common types of natural dyes and their chemical constituent. One is, the first one is anthocyanin. What is its source? It is found in fruits such as berries, grapes, red cabbage and I am sure you have noticed all of them around you. What is their chemistry? Anthocyanins are water soluble pigments belonging to the flavonoid group. They appear red, purple, blue depending on the pH. Remember I had told you that sometimes auxiliaries like acid and bases are added to change the color and anthocyanin is one such dye category which changes color with the pH. And what are the applications of anthocyanin? They are used for fabric dyeing as well as as pH indicators and I have a dedicated lecture on pH indicators from natural dye sources where we will read and understand and learn in detail about the pH indicators. Different types of colored compounds. Second category is carotenoid. What are their sources? They are extracted from as the name suggests carrots, marigold and sa saffron. And what is their chemistry? Carotenoids are hydrocarbons with conjugated double bonds responsible for yellow, orange and red colors and their application is found in textile dyeing as well as food colorants. Often you would have heard that saffron is added to kheer and that brings in a yellow, light yellow color or in rasmalai. So, this is that same saffron which can be used as food colorant as well as it can be used for textile dyeing, but of course it will be too expensive to use saffron. Instead there are other yellow sources of dyes. Third is chlorophyll that we are all aware the source is from any green plant leaves and algae and its chemistry is that chlorophyll is a complex molecule with porphyrin rings containing magnesium in the center and it imparts green color. It can be used for green coloration of textiles and mulberry leaves are one of the sources which we have used quite abundantly. Indigo, I have been talking about this dye for quite some time now. Let us try to understand the chemistry of the dye. It is sourced from indigo plant which is indigo ferra tectoria, but it is also 
available in Strobilanthus, Cusia and some other plants which have indigo colorant. The chemistry of indigo is based on organic compound called indigo tin which undergoes oxidation to produce the blue color and it is its application is well known well documented historically that blue dyed fabric and denim dyeing have been practiced for quite some time. Fifth dye category is turmeric which also I have been mentioning quite a lot because it is abundantly available in India. So, it is sourced from the rhizome of the turmeric plant. Its chemistry, the main coloring agent is curcumin, the molecule is called curcumin and shortly we will see some of the structures also which imparts yellow color. In its application it finds a, as a traditional dye, textile dye as well as, as in medicine and it is of course, a very common condiment in the kitchen. The sixth dye is madder. The source is derived from the stem, leaves and roots of madder plant Rubia tinctoria, Rubia cordifolia. In India, we have more of Rubia cordifolia and in Europe, it is more of Rubia tinctoria. Now, there is a slight difference in both the species, but the main colorant is still the red and purple colorant and the main dye components are alizarine, purpurin as, we, as well as rubiarin and its application is mainly in the textile dyeing and historical manuscripts also describe that madder was used extensively. Seventh dye is cochineal, again I have been talking a great deal about it. What is its source? It is obtained from the dry, dried bodies of female cochineal insect which is called Dictylopius coccus. What is the chemistry? The main colorant is carminic acid which produces red color or hue and it is mainly applied in textiles as well as it is a good natural fluid colorant. Henna, eighth number, what is its source? We all know henna is mehndi derived from the leaves of henna plant, Lausonia inermis. Lausonia has a chemi chemical called lauzone which is the active ingredient which is responsible for orange red color and it is mainly used for body art and hair dyeing, also sometimes for text textile dyeing. Ninth is catechu, katha, it is derived from the heartwood of acacia catechu plant tree. The chemical substance that is available in that colorant is catechin and epicatechin. These are the ma main and active compound responsible for dark brown color along with some tannins and protocatechuic acid. Its application is in fabric dyeing and hair dyeing. Tenth is rheum. Source is derived from the rhizome and roots of Himalayan rhubarb plant, Rheum imodi. It has a chemical which is called imodin, allo imodin, psychosian, chrysophenol. These are active color which are responsible for yellowish green color and it is mainly used for fabric dyeing. Eleventh is hibiscus. The de, it is derived from the flowers of red hibiscus plant which is botanically known as hibiscus rosa sinensis. The chemistry is that it contains anthocyanin and polyphenols, protocatechoic acid, quercetin are active compounds responsible for the green purple color 
with different mordants and it is mainly used for fabric dyeing and as a pH indicator. Twelfth dye is terminalia. The source is derived from bark of terminalia plant, a terminalia arjuna tree and the chemicals that are present are polyphenols, flavonoids, ta tannins. These are active compounds responsible for the yellowish green color. It is mainly used as fabric dyeing or as medicine. Thirteenth is tectona. It is derived from the leaves of shagun tree that is tectona grandis. The chemistry tells us that it is made up of anthoquinones and anthocyanin as active compounds which are responsible for reddish brown color and it is mainly used for fabric dyeing and hair dyeing. Fourteenth is balsam derived from the red flowers of balsam which is impetuous balsam and the chemistry shows that it has 2 methoxy 1, 4 naphthaquinone flavonoid flavonols, camphorphyrol 3 O glycosiderase are some of the active compounds responsible for red color and it is used for fabric dyeing and is also antimicrobial activity. Eclipta 15th plant sore derived from the stems of Eclipta alba. It has compounds like vidinolactone and dimethyl vidinolactone. These are active compounds responsible for black color and it is used for fabric dyeing as well as hair dyeing. So, understanding the, cult, the structure activity relationship is very important because unless and until we understand the structure activity relationship which is also abbreviated as SAR of natural dyes, it we will not be able to appreciate how it can adhere to the fabric and different fabrics have different adhering groups. So, it refers to the correlation between the chemical structure of the molecules and their chemical and coloring properties including factors such as color, stability and affinity for substrates. Understanding the SAR helps us in predicting and optimizing dyeing characteristics of natural dyes. Here are some key aspects of the structure activity relationship of the natural dyes. There is something called chromophore and there is something called oxochrome. As the name suggests, chromophore means color related molecule. Oxochrome is an auxiliary which helps in enhancing the color. So, chromophore these are parts of molecules which are responsible for color appearance in the natural dyes and are usually conjugated systems of double bonds or aromatic rings such as chromophores. Examples include anthocyanin structure in anthocyanins and the conjugated double bond in carotenoids. Oxochromes, these are functional groups that enhance the color intensity and shift the absorption wavelength. Hydroxyl group, amino group, carbonyl group are common oxochromes present in natural dyes. How specific structures help in enhancing the color intensity, conjugation and resonance. The more the conjugation of double bond in a molecular system, it enhances the color intensity. The greater the extent of conjugation, the more red shift of the absorption wavelength 
resulting in color change happens. Resonance stabilization of chromophore contributes to the stability of colored form of dye. So, slowly we are getting to understand the chemistry of natural dyes, functional groups and solubilities, because if a dye is not soluble, it becomes a pigment and then it is no more useful for dyeing. Therefore, there is a reason for some colorants to be soluble and some to be insoluble. Now, we will try to understand which functional groups help in solubility factor. The presence of specific functional groups in the dye molecule can influence its solubility and consequently its suitability for dyeing different substrates. For example, hydroxyl and carboxyl groups in anthroquinone derivatives such as alizarine in madder contribute to the solubility and dye substrate interaction. Why? Because they are rightly paced so that metal can metal mordant can chelate with it and therefore, dye can be adhered properly. Coming to metal com chelation or complexation, some natural dyes form complexes with metal ions resulting in a change in color or improved dyeing properties. This is particularly relevant when using mordants in dyeing processes. Metal mordants can coordinate with functional groups in the dye mol molecule altering its electronic structure and color. So, they play a great deal of role because this complexation plays a very vital role in adhering the dye molecule to the fabric. If the metal is absent, the adherence is not permanent and that is why you must have seen that in the pre mordanting the colors were much darker and in the post mordanting the colors were feeble. Now, that is because at the after the dyeing the mordant did not have much role to play, but when we treat the fabric before dyeing with a mordant then it has a major role to play. Similarly, there is another factor which is called pH sensitivity. The color of certain natural dyes such as anthocyanins in particular can be influenced by pH. This is due to the presence of pH sensitive groups in the molecule. The ionization state of these groups affects the color of the dye leading to color changes under acidic or alkaline conditions. So, we see that this is also a very important factor when we look at the SAR. Sometimes even steric factor matters. The spatial arrangement of the constituents around the chromophore can influence the dye's ability to interact with the substrate and its overall stability. Steric hindrance may affect the accessibility of the dye molecule to binding sites of the substrate and even the approach of the metal mordant. So, understanding the structure activity relationship of natural dyes allows researchers and dye practitioners to design and modify molecules for specific applications. It can also help in addressing challenges such as improving color fastness and optimizing dyeing conditions for different substrates. So, you see that as we go along and we look at the structure of the molecule of the colorant, more and better understanding becomes apparent 
that how this molecule can adhere to the fabric, what kind of fabric can take this dye better. So, a better understanding of the dyeing process is only possible when we understand the chemistry of natural dyes. Now, what is the role of chromophore and oxochrome? Let us try to understand that color, chromophore and oxochromes. The carbonyl and the ethylene or the vinyl groups have chromophoric properties only when they are present in the molecule in multiple conjugated order. Also, now you understand what is a chromophore. Thus, acetone is colorless molecule while diacetyl is yellow and benzyl is deep yellow while triketopentane is yellow orange. So, the color is intensifying as we are increasing the carbon chain and the conjugation. Since it is the delocalization of the pi electron that is related to the production of the color, it is evident from this that these examples having such delocalization accompanies multiple conjugated unsaturation. For a molecule to be colored molecule, it has to be it has to have chromophore and oxochrome and the two put together if they are in conjugated system will create color. So, that is the relationship between the color chromophore and oxochrome. So, color can arise not alone by just chromophore, but if we want a good deep color intensity we need to have in the molecule both chromophore and oxochrome, so that intense color is generated. Now, looking at this slide, it was way back in 1876 that a scientist Owen Witt observed that colored molecules contain certain unsaturated group and which he called them as chromophores and the compounds containing chromophores were then called chromogen. When certain group called also were identified oxochromes were present, the chromogen in the dye was intensified. So, some of the chromophores are keto, nitroso, quinanoid, ethylenic, nitro, azo groups these are all called chromophores. A chromophore is a molecule, component or group of atoms within a large molecule that is responsible for the molecules color. The absorption of light by the chromophore leads to the molecules exhibiting a specific color. Chromophores are commonly found in organic molecules and are essentially for the colors seen in various natural and synthetic compounds and dyes. The color of a chromophore arises from the electronic transition, transition it undergoes when it absorbs light. The absorption of light energy causes electrons within the chromophore to move to a higher energy level. The color observed corresponds to the complementary color of the absorbed light. Examples of chromophore include the conjugated double bonds in organic compounds, metal complexes and certain groups such as azo that is N double bond N, nitro NO2 and carbonyl CO groups. The presence of specific chromophore is often used in the analysis of molecules in the field such as chemistry, biochemistry and spectroscopy and they are very important component of color. 
Oxochromes may be either acidic or basic like OH or NH2. Other oxochromes include COOH, SO3H, NR2. These groups form salts with either acids or alkalis. They also form hydrogen bonds with certain groups like OH of the cellulose or NH2 of the wool and silk. Azobenzene is one example which is not a simple you know a molecule. It is a molecule which breaks down into amino compounds and those amino compounds are banned. So, azobenzene containing N double bond chromophore not serving as dye, but the moment you add an amino group to one of the benzyl ring that is para amino azobenzene, it becomes a dispersed dye. So, you see that NH2 which has added to the benzene ring acts as an oxochrome. Various types of chromophores are present. Witt observed this in way back in 1876 and he said he named them as chromogens and all the various different types of chromophores that is the keto group, the nitroso group, the quinonoid groups, the ethylenic group, the nitro group, azo group were all common chromophores and the oxochromes he identified were OH, NH2, carboxylic acids, sulfonic acid, NH, and NR2 and so on and they can form salts with acids and bases. They also form hydrogen bond with certain groups like OH of cellulose and NH2 of the wool and silk. So, a basic azobenzene with aromatic ring on the side chain uh, on the sides is not colored, but with oxochrome's help that is when NH2 is added, a functional group is added within the molecule it is attached to the chromophore, it modifies or enhances the color. Unlike chromophore, oxochrome themselves typically do not contribute significantly to the color of a molecule, but play a crucial role in influencing the intensity and shifting the absorption band of the chromophore. Oxochromes usually contain lone pair of electrons that can interact with the pi electron system of the chromophore and it is affecting its electronic transition. This interaction often leads to changes in absorption spectrum of the molecule influencing the color that is observed. So, it is very important that we understand what is a chromophore what is an oxochrome, how chromophore and oxochrome can help each other to enhance the color and how they can adhere to the fabric along with the metal of the mordant. The role of oxochrome is very important. Common oxochromes include groups like OH, hydroxyl, amino, NHR, alkyl amino, dialkyl amino, N R 2. These groups provide additional electronic transition or modify the existing ones resulting in a shift or broadening of the adsorption band of the chromophore. This interaction is crucial in many dye molecules where both the chromophore and the oxochrome work together to produce a wide range of colors. In summary, while chromophores are responsible for the intrinsic color of the molecule, oxochromes modify and enhance that color through their interaction with the chromophoric electronic system, which means that one causes the color which is called chromophore, 
the other one enhances the color by its presence if present and that is called oxochrome. I hope the two terms are clear now. So, chromophore and oxochromes in natural dyes. Chromophore and oxochromes are important components of natural dyes as well as synthetic dyes that contribute to their coloration properties. Here is a brief you know explanation of each. Chromophores are chemical groups within the molecule that are responsible for the color of the compound. They absorb certain wavelengths of light while allowing others to pass through it or be reflected resulting in perception of color. In natural dyes, chromophores are often organic molecules with conjugated double bonds or aromatic rings. These structures have electrons that can easily undergo electronic transition absorbing specific wavelengths of light and imparting color to the dye. Examples of chromophore in natural dyes include groups like carotenoids, anthocyanin and indigo. Oxochrome also helps chromophore to intensify and this I have been telling for quite some time now. Oxochromes are functional groups that modify the and intensify the shade of the color produced by the chromophore. They do not typically produce color themselves, but enhance the color produced by the chromophore. Oxochromes usually charged or capable of forming hydrogen bonds allowing them to interact with solvent molecules or other chemical species which can affect the energy levels of the chromophore. Common oxochrome includes hydroxyl that is OH, amino NH2 and carbonyl which could be anything like COOH or CO or COO uh, minus groups. These groups can alter the electron density of the chromophore influencing its absorbance spectrum and thus the color of the observed value. In natural dyes, the combination of chromophores and oxochromes determines the final color produced. The specific structure and arrangement of these groups within the dye molecule dictate which wavelengths of light are absorbed and which are reflected or transmitted resulting in the perceived color. Now, I would stop for a minute and explain you what this means. Whatever we see the light that enters our eye is not what we see. What we see is the reflected light and it has different intensity. So, if a green light is getting into our eyes, we see the yellow light coming out. If a blue light is entering our eyes, we see the red light. So, but what we perceive is what we understand. So, this is what it means. Understanding the role of chromophore and oxochrome is crucial in both the synthesis and application of natural dyes for various purposes including textile, art and food coloring. So, uh, unless and until we understand what is a chromophore, what is an oxochrome, we will not have an appreciation for color and its intensity. So, structure of natural dyes and their color. The relationship between the structure of natural dyes and color they produce is based on the molecular arrangement of the chromophores and the oxochromes within the dye molecules. And this is something that now by now you would have understood very specifically. Here is how it is generally worked. 
chromophore structure. The, cr the chromophore is a part of the molecule responsible for absorbing light and giving the dye its color. Common chromophore in natural dyes include conjugated systems of double bond and aromatic rings. The arrangement of the these double bonds or aromatic rings determine the wavelength of light that the dye molecule can absorb. This absorption spectrum correlates with the color observed. For example, molecules with extended conjugated bonds often absorb longer wavelengths producing colors like red, orange or yellow, while those with shorter conjugation may absorb shorter wavelength resulting in colors like blue or violet. So, the conjugation plays a very crucial role. Oxochrome as we all know influences the, uh, the molecular environment. Oxochrome influences, these are functional groups that can alter the color produced by the chromophore by modifying its electronic density or by providing additional sites for interaction. Functional groups like hydroxyl that is OH, amino NH2 or carbonyl that is COOH can act as oxochromes. These groups can alter the electronic structure of the chromophore shifting its absorption spectrum and thus changing the perceived color. For example, the addition of hydroxyl group OH to an aromatic ring can shift the absorption spectrum towards longer wavelength resulting in bathochromic a shift towards the red end of the spectrum and a change in color from blue to purple. So, you see that just by merely adding an OH and what we saw in the para amino azobenzene, the addition of amino group could make all the difference that one was a non dye and the other one became a dye. Molecular environment surrounding the dye molecule also influences its color. Factors such as solvent polarity, pH and interaction with other molecules can affect the electronic structure of the dye molecule and its ability to absorb light. So, absorption of light is directly proportional to the structure of the dye. The structure of the dye is directly connected with chromophore and oxochrome. So, all these are interrelated and they have an influence on each other. So, understanding the relation between the, between the molecular structure of the natural dyes then becomes very important. For example, changes in pH can protonate or deprotonate oxochrome group, altering their ability to interact with the chromophore and thus changing the color of the dye, as what we will learn in the case of anthocyanin. Understanding the relationship between the molecular structure of natural dyes and the resulting color is essential for designing dyes with specific color properties and for predicting their behavior under different conditions. So, if we want to have a proper understanding of the colorant, what color it can produce, how it can get affected by the uh, you know uh, the acidity or the alkalinity, then we have to have a very good understanding of the molecular structure of the natural dyes what are the chromophores, what are the oxochromes, how they are connected, how much conjugation is there in the molecule, are there aromatic rings, other factors which are enhancing the color intensity is something that helps us in understanding the specific behavior of the color properties. This knowledge is crucial in application including textile dyeing, food coloring and pigment production. 
Now, just to give you an example of this dye. Now, this is a dye when it is in neutral condition, it has a quininoid base structure, but the moment it gets protonated, it acquires a flavellium ion structure. That means, to the natural dye, a proton has added on and if it adds on or loses a proton, then it becomes an anionic quinonoid base and the color varies as the, uh, the depictions are shown in flavonoid becomes more orangish, anionic quinonoid becomes bluish and neutral quinonoid remains more on the purplish kind of uh, situation. And this is very apparent when we add an acid or an alkali, these colors come out very apparently and that is how these anthocyanins are used as pH indicators which I mentioned a while ago. So, the color chemistry of natural dyes is no different from the color chemistry of chem synthetic dyes. However, since we are doing a lecture series on natural dyes, we will concentrate mainly on natural dyes. The color chemistry of natural dyes is a complex interplay of various factors including the molecular structure of the dye molecules their interaction with the substrate such as textile or paper, environmental factors such as pH and temperature and the presence of mordants and other chemicals. Here is a breakdown of the three aspects of color chemistry of natural dyes. What plays? This is like coming to a summation that oxochromes and chromophores are the integral part of color. As mentioned earlier, the color of natural dye is primarily determined by the presence of chromophores and oxochromes within the dye molecules. Chromophores are responsible for the absorption of light while oxochromes modify the intensity and shade of the color. The specific arrangement and types of chromophores and oxochromes in the dye molecule influence the absorption spectrum and enhance the color observed. So, we know that they play a very crucial role in the color chemistry of natural dyes. Molecular structure and interaction with substrate is then subsequently more important. Molecular structure of natural dyes plays a crucial role in their color chemistry. Dyes with conjugated double bonds or aromatic rings in their structure often exhibit vivid colors due to the delocalization of the electrons, which allows for absorption of specific wavelength of light. The length and arrangement of these conjugated systems determine the color absorbed and reflected by the dye. Interaction with substrate, natural dyes bind to substrates such as textile or paper through various mechanisms including hydrogen bonding, van der Waal forces and covalent bonding. The interaction between the dye molecules and the substrate can affect the perceived color due to changes in light absorption and reflection. So, what we are trying to understand is that how are these colors now going to integrate with the substrate, because we will also be learning the innovative natural dyeing. So, how do they actually adhere to the surface is what matters a lot. Effect of pH, 
The pH of the dyeing solution can significantly influence the color obtained from the natural dyes. Many natural dyes contain functional groups that can undergo protonation or deprotonation reaction depending on the pH of the medium. This alters the electronic structure of the dye molecule leading to changes in absorption spectrum and thus the color observed. So, when I gave you that example of flavanium ion and the quinonoid structure, neutral quinonoid structure and then anionic quinonoid structure, you saw that there was a variation in color from orange to purple to blue, intense blue. So, this means that the pH is playing or the proton is playing a very crucial role. The proton adds on to the oxygen of the central moiety and that is where the all the changes in the colors are observed. Mordants and modifiers, they also have a big deal of role to play. Mordants and modifiers are chemicals that enhance the color fastness and brilliance of the natural dyes by forming complexes with both the dye molecule and the substrate molecule. They can also alter the color produced by the dye often by changing the pH or by facilitating the formation of the specific chemical bonds between the dye and the substrate. So, they play an equally important role because as I told you in the very beginning that natural dyes require a completely different retires for being used as textile dyeing. And therefore, we need to understand not only the color chemistry, but also the role of the auxiliaries which are mordants and other modifiers primarily to understand how this can adhere to the fabric most effectively, so that we get good color depth and good color fastness. Then environmental factors such as temperature, light exposure and atmospheric condition can also affect the stability and color fastness of natural dyes. Some dyes undergo photodegradation or oxidation over time leading to changes in color or fading. You must have noticed that when you buy a new cloth, a new garment which is printed or colored or dyed, you are recommended to put it uh, after washing in shade and not directly in sun and that is primarily to stop the photodegradation or the oxidation of these dyes under the UV light. So, those kind of things are known to you and therefore, we also have to remember that very high temperature exposure to light and other atmospheric conditions should be avoided in order to get stable color. Understanding the color chemistry of natural dyes is essential for optimizing dyeing processes, achieving desired color outcomes and ensuring the durability of the dyed materials. It also provides insights into the historical and cultural significance of natural dye sources and their traditional use in various communities. Now, having understood that this lecture which was dedicated mainly to understand the chemistry of dyes and the types of molecules that have been identified in the common sources of dyes. We took some examples of almost 15 dye plants which are a source of natural dye and obviously, they do not have the same chemical 
they have different chemical moieties which are giving different colors. So, if they are giving different colors, their structure has to be different and if their structure is different, their chromophore and oxochromes which are related to the color formation are also different and therefore, you know understanding the chemistry becomes imperative and important. We have to understand that natural dyes have to use mordants and modifiers. We have to protect them from environmental condition in order to get best results and this all can come only by understanding the chemistry of natural dyes. And we also saw that how the presence of an hydroxyl group or an amino group in an azo bonded uh, two aromatic link compound can make all the difference in making it a dye molecule. So, understanding this the role of chromophore having conjugation extended conjugation to be able to absorb light in the visible region is one factor. The presence of oxochrome in intensifying the color is another factor. The third factor is how will the mordant approach if there are no such oxochromes available. Then the fourth factor that we looked at that how the fabric can adhere to the uh, dye or the dye can adhere to the fabric, it requires a mordant and also sometimes or maybe most of the times the hydroxyl group and the amino group of the oxochromic part can help in hydrogen bonding in van der Waal forces to keep them connected. Color intensity is one thing which is due to chromophore and oxochrome. Retaining the color on the fabric is another thing which requires again oxochrome metal mordants, then only it can be an example of good dyed fabric. So, having understood the color chemistry of natural dyes, I think we have come to an end of this lecture and I am sure that you have understood that it plays a big role. So, in this lecture, if I have to summarize, I will say that the chemistry of natural dyes is quite similar to the chemistry of synthetic dyes. However, the treatise of the synthetic dyes is different from natural dyes and since we are learning about natural dyes, we will restrict our information related to the structure, the structure activity relationship to natural dyes. The first and the foremost thing that we learnt was that we looked at various different types of plants that are sources of natural dyes and we also learnt about the color that they produce on the dyed fabric and we saw that it gave a range of colors from blue to red to brown to yellow to greenish uh, yellow and many other such colors including black. Obviously, when there is a range of so many colors, their structure has to be different. So, then we started looking more intently into the colors their molecular structure and when we started looking at the molecular structure, we came across two important factors. One is that a molecular structure 
must have a chromophore and must have an oxochrome. Chromophore is the one which creates the color and oxochrome is the one which enhances the color. We took an example of azobenzene and para amino azobenzene. Azobenzene is not a dye, but para amino benzene which then has an amino group in the azobenzene structure at the para position creates conjugation, extended conjugation and that makes it a dye. So, we understood two more factors that a chromophore should have conjugation or benzene ring and this the extended conjugation with the help of oxochrome can make the color intensify. Then we learnt that the pH stability is also an important factor and we, I gave you an example of an anthoquinone that it can get affected by the presence of an acid and go into the flavonian structure. Whereas, if the it is deprotonated it becomes neutral and if it is if it is treated with the base it becomes an anionic structure and all these have different colors. So, the color chemistry is also dependent on pH particularly for anthocyanin dyes and that is what we learnt. Then we learnt about the modifiers and the mordants. So, what is the role of a mordant? I have been talking about it from lecture number 1 that mordants play a very crucial role in being a bridging head between the fabric and the dye molecule. So, mordants and modifiers are required in natural dye chemistry. We cannot possibly ignore them or avoid them. However, we can use safer mordants. And lastly, we spoke about the environmental factors and those are light, temperature, heat and other atmospheric conditions. We cannot keep naturally dyed fabric under UV light for extended period of time because photo oxidation takes place. So, therefore, there are some measures that need to be kept in mind remembering the chemistry of natural dyes that what are the do's and what are the don'ts. So, with this we come to an end of this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.